Okay, it's another video giving all praises to Yahweh, Barsham, Yahweh Shai, Barsham, Rakakwadash, Shalom to the elect. And uh, what inspired me? Well, this video is going to be called, um, here's the title Workmen are worthy of their meat. Workmen are worthy of their meat. That's going to be the title of this video. What inspired me? To do this video was I was watching the elders of GMS. That's the brothers from Connecticut, and uh, there was a beautiful statement that Elder Tazadakpa made, and I'm going to play it for you. And then I'm going to build off the statement that he made. He actually quoted the scripture, and it was in um, response to the video that uh, Deacon Akar did where he asked the illustrious question, <laughs> did this Israelite group sell out? And as you see here, he's got the uh, thumbnail of um, the four elders of uh, GMS, Great Millstone, beginning with Elder Pastor, and then myself, and then Elder Apostle Ricard, and then Elder Apostle Ramla. So without further ado, let's get into it. You know, and hey man, you know, we almost a fuck up out of here. I'd like to say something. Oh, you can say it. You can say a whole lot. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, since we're starting, you know, uh, you, you know, you got, you got a particular group of, uh, I'll, I'll use the term, a particular group of mofos out there that's uh, talking Spirit, uh, spiritual misfits, especially the two leaders, the two heads. Now, we do believe they are members of the elect among them. But as it stands right now, the head, the heads of that group, the two heads, they're two spiritual misfits. So let's move on. Uh, did these men sell out? Right? Oh, oh, Talking talk about the, get right to it. Did these <laughs> men sell out? Right? Uh, yeah. Because you know, since we're starting, you know, uh, you, you know, you got, you got a particular group of. Uh, I'll, I'll use the term oh, a particular group of mofos yeah. out there. And you notice how the elders, you notice how they're laughing because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> quote, the, quote the words of uh, my man from uh, uh, from I Love Lucy, uh, which was a sitcom, came out in the 50s. Desi Arnaz, all right, Desi Arnaz, who was the husband of uh, the star of the sitcom. Lucille Ball, who of course played Lucy, right? And he had a, a catchphrase he would say on the show, it's just so ridiculous. You know, he'd say that in his uh, so-called Cuban accent. So that's why the elders are laughing, because it's just so, it's just so ridiculous. It, the, the idea of the Guinness the Pasta on down selling out. <laughs> that's why they're laughing. And pretty much the the Sakari group, Deacon Destruction Mode, that was, you know, that's the title of his channel. All right, pretty much they did that as clickbait, you know. That's how desperate they are to get views and clout, mainly clout, as, you, as you're about to see. That's why I titled this, entitled this video, Workman is Worthy of His Meat. It all comes down to faith. If you're really pushing the truth, the 100% truth, you're going to get taken care of. You don't have to create all these gimmicks. As you're about to see, you don't have to create all these gimmicks just to uh, turn the, the Heavenly Father's, you know, the Heavenly Father's uh, house, if you will, which is a metaphor for this knowledge, this truth, turn it into a house of merchandise. You don't have to do that. That's a lack of faith. If you're teaching 100% truth, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh, Shai, will put the Spirit on those that are listening to you to support you. 
and I do mean support you financially. That, but that's incumbent upon them. You know, their conscience is going to kick in, and they're going to, uh, and it ha it happens to us all the time. People come on the the comment board and they say, "Well, what can I do to help this ministry? What I, don't, I, I got a gift for you, brothers, man. I want to give you something." They'll be compelled because the, the righteous spirit within them, when they hear this knowledge is truth, they will be like, yeah, yeah, we got to do something. You know, I'm listening. I'm getting all this great information. I got to do something for these brothers. Okay? And that comes down to faith. So you don't need to turn the father's house into a house of merchandise, as you're about to see. You know, and that's the one thing that pisses Yahweh Shai the hell off, man. It tells you that in the scripture. All right, so let's move on. That's uh, talking about did these men sell out, right? Oh, oh, talk, right to talking it. about did, <laughs> right <to it>. did <laughs> these men sell out, right? And when I first saw the uh, the uh, thumbnail that Deacon Nicole put up asking the question, did these men sell out? I, shit, I was waiting. I, I, I said, man, I can't because he had put it earlier in the, earlier that week and and that. Friday of that week, he would be dropping the video, going live, whatever. So I couldn't wait, man. I said, man, I got to watch this because I'm part of the elders of, of uh, GMS. I'm part of that crew, <laughs> right? So I was like, man, I got to see, damn, what, how did we sell out? Where did we take the big payoff? I got to see this. And then you, you watch the video, right? Which I got the video queued up. You watch the video, it's like, you know, his the most compelling evidence he had of supposedly of us selling out is the fact we're teaching about hell. And if you don't, you you know, you accept God's laws. No, you accept the Apostle Paul's laws, but you don't accept God's laws. You, you're going to hell or some shit like that. Deacon the car said, and I said, what? I said, man, we don't teach no going to hell. If anything, we're getting on, on the group, the main group that's pushing that is IUIC, and we've been getting on it for the last month or so, beginning for Elder Pastor on now, we've been getting on them about that hell nonsense. You know, teaching that that's a doctrine of the RCC, the Roman Catholic Church. The Bible doesn't support it. We've been breaking down that there's no such thing as hell. That would be a violation of uh, Psalm 136, where it speaks about the Lord's mercies endure forever. If, if you have an individual going to hell and burning forever, where's the Lord's mercy at? Again, Psalm 136, and it was Elder Apostle first brought it out, that scripture, and he tied it in, which is an excellent point. When you read Psalm 136, all it talks about is the mercy of the Heavenly Father that endures forever. So if you, have, if you indeed really have a place called hell and where people are burning forever, how is that mercy? That would violate that... Uh, uh, scriptural uh, uh, that would violate that scripture where it speaks about the, the the heavenly father and his mercy endure forever he even shows mercy to the other nations okay because after a thousand years of slavery they're going to go back to their lands and, and it tells you that in the scriptures but they're still going to serve us as as uh, servants right but eventually the heavenly father Yahweh through Sunday how shall have mercy on them his mercy endure forever. But the main mercy goes to the nation of Israel, of course. Everything is balance, you know. That that would be a violation of balance. You burn in hell forever. That as it is written, the Heavenly Father is a He's a power of balance. A false balance is an abomination unto him. That's as it is written. A false balance is an abomination unto him. So so that would be a false balance. You go to hell and burn forever. What kind of shit is that? But there are Israelites that actually believe that shit. Anyway, let's move on, man. Sellouts take payoffs, right? Sellouts is about getting money for providing a service for their master. See, but the Bible says this, Proverbs 23 and 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. But the scripture says, buy the truth and sell it not. Now, how do you buy this truth? You buy it with what? With your sac with you sacrificing yourself for it. That's how you buy it. That's right. That's a hundred percent right. You buy it by with your time, your energy, 
you become that sacrifice. Okay, uh, Romans 12. Let's go to Romans to back the brother up. Now look at the subheading. Dedicated service. That's on the KJV side. And the NLT side says, a living sacrifice to the Heavenly Father. And that's us. That's how we buy the truth. Now the most important part is sell it not. In relation to this lesson, is sell it not. You're going to see that the Sakari group have violated that. Sell it not. And not just them. The IUIC, they're guilty of the same shit. You go, you watch their videos. Towards the end of their videos, they're advertising all, all what they're selling, all their products, all their wares. Okay? Buy the truth, sell it not. Sell it not. What, what don't they get about that? But they do that because they have no faith, man. They don't think they're going to get taken care of. And, and really, it goes deeper. They, they're looking at this, this knowledge, this truth as a, as a vehicle to get rich, carnally rich. They're not prophets, they're profiteers. Okay, they're looking at this knowledge, this truth as, as a means of profit. Fil like the Bible says, filthy lucre. And the word lucre ties into profit. It's from the Latin meaning profit. Romans 12 and 1. <clears throat> it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Heavenly Father, and it's by the mercies of the Heavenly Father we even get this knowledge, this truth that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That's how you buy it. So if you didn't understand the, the, the scripture, buy the truth and sell it not, now you do. Buy it means you, with your energy, with your time, with your service, you become a living sacrifice. That's how you buy the truth. <laughs> and then you sell it not, because that's where faith kicks in. If you Again, if you learn the truth and you go out there and you teach it, you will get taken care of, man. The Lord will put the, the the spirit on certain people to take care of you, offer you shelter, offer you money, offer you things, because they're so glad that they have heard this word, this, heard this knowledge. They've never heard this. That some of these people out there have never heard the truth taught like like the way it's being t taught. Okay, and they want to be grateful. All right, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the heavenly Father that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Heavenly Father, which is your reasonable service. It's our reasonable service. Okay, well, this is what we're supposed to do. This is what we were created to do, hell. Okay, so let's get back to the video. Sacrificing yourself for it. Right. That's how you buy it. That's right. And it says sell it not. Meaning, make it not merchandise, which... Because you become a living sacrifice, like I just read to you, Romans 12 and 1. Let's bring that back. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. But the scripture says, buy the truth and sell it not. Now, how do you buy this truth? You buy it with what? With your sac with you sacrificing yourself for it. That's how you buy it. And it says, sell it not. Meaning, make it not merchandise, which, mm -hmm. let's see, um, these people posing this question, did these, did these men sell out? Well, if you watched their little uh, funky-ass video last night, for the first, what, maybe 15, <laughs> maybe 20, 30 minutes of the video was advertisements for selling shit, wasn't it? Yeah. Sure. The advertisements, yeah. they had nothing but advertisements yeah. from, the, from the beginning of the video for maybe the first 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Well, I don't know about... 20, 30 minutes, because from what I see here, let, let's back the brother up. He may be embellishing a little bit. Bear with me for a minute. All right, because here's the video right here. More liquor or the Ismailite. Okay, here's the video right here. Did this Israelite group sell out? You saw the thumbnail with the elders on it. Now, for the first at least five, almost six minutes, nothing but advertisements. So one has to wonder, is this a sellout group? Because you ain't going to see nothing like that on our videos, beginning to fell the pasta on down. All right, what you're about to see here. So let, let's go. Okay. Check it out. All right. Hold on. Alright. <clears throat> hmm. 
Satan don't want it to play. Oh, it is playing, but like it's frozen or something. Wait a minute. Wait, who's in the oh, dough? Uh, uh, they don't let them bruise in the dough. We ain't going nowhere. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. He bruised. So that's the in, in, intro to that, that thing, right? They don't let them bruise. Of course, the, the one who's doing the rapping, the music is uh, Deacon the Car. And of course, those who are listening, they don't want to get a copy of that. And I, I guarantee you it's not going to be for free. You're going to have to pay. <laughs> so that's, there's your first example. Sell the truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. Let's move on. He's rapping about, so supposedly rapping about the truth. Who's in the dough? They don't let them bruise in the dough. Look, Joe Biden need on everybody. Deacon Sakari, new clothing go, there line. There Deacon Hakar's clothing line. There's the, there's the uh, address right there, the web address. Buy the truth, sell it not. The whole armor, put it on. New clothing line out right now. We got Young apparel bruise. for the sisters, apparel. Young bruise, the whole armor. That's a, that's the scriptural quote. Put on the whole armor. Buy the truth, sell it not. For the key. You want to know who sells out or who's selling out? There you go. You're looking at it. Is and of course. Uh, See if you can find any of this nonsense on our videos. Begin to fill the pasta on down. You ain't gonna find it, cause we don't believe in that nonsense. Carol for the mighty men of Israel. Look at we that got Sinai. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, Sinai. Any of them niggas been to Sinai? <laughs> Clothing line <laughs> out right now. Even the, we got even the children are brought into this. Even the children, man. Damn. Apparel for the sisters, apparel for the kids, and of course, apparel for the mighty men of Israel. Apparel for the mighty men of Israel. Sinai. Damn. Mount Sinai. We got quality material. Well, I, yeah, quality material. Now, according to the law, it speaks of 100% of uh, whatever you wear is supposed to be 100%, not mixed fabric. I wonder if this not, if this is uh, this stuff here is 100%, like 100% cotton, 100% wool, 100% linen, l linen, if that's li linen, yeah, I believe that's how you pronounce it. You get the idea, 100%, right? Because the scriptures are against mixed fabric. It's against the law. Affordable prices, y'all. Check it out. <laughs> Affordable prices. Oh, you mean like your baby onesies that I saw in the store for three ninety nine, and you guys sell it for thirty bucks, just because it has some few uh, scriptural quotes on it? Or I believe that the baby onesie had the name of the heavenly Father on it. Thirty dollars, man. Yeah, that's quite afford affordable. Got stuff for the seven. There you go. We got stuff for the Northern Kingdom. We got exclusive. <laughs> These guys are not prophets. They're profiteers. They're, they're marketeers. They have turned the father's house into a house of merchandise. How can you deny that? There's the evidence right in your face. Okay? And Yahweh Shai said that. He said, make not my... Let's get the scripture, man. Can't turn a blind, blind eye to that. Make not my... Fathers. There you go. What's the difference between what you see in, in that video and what I'm about to read here? The book of John 2 and 13. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Yahweh went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting and when he had made a scourge and and even now as i speak a scourge is being made for these guys they're gonna get whipped man how about shimmy Shai gonna whip those guys you watch okay and when he had made a scourge which is a whip of small cords he drove them all out of the temple and, and they're going to be driven out the temple. The temple, wait a minute, the temple is being built right now, the spiritual temple. We're building a spiritual temple right now. Is it not written, 
We we are the we are the most high's husbandry. We are his building. The apostle Paul said that. So the temple, the spiritual temple, is being built right now. So all these niggas in the temple that don't belong in the temple, these profiteers, they're gonna be driven out of the temple the same way Yahushai physically drove out all them niggards out of the out of the physical temple back then. Okay? And this time is a spiritual temple. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overthrew the tables. Overthrew the tables. <laughs> Show you how pissed off Yahweh I was. And said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Buy the truth, sell it not. There you go, man. 17 verse, and his disciples remembered that it was written, the zeal of thine house have eaten me up. Yeah, yeah I wish I was passionate. He was kicking ass that day. He, he gonna kick ass. Spiritually, he gonna kick ass again. These niggas, they gonna learn. He's the same tied old reprobates in the past that just couldn't get it right, man. They're back again today to do that nonsense so they can get they can get them lashes <laughs> from Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Uh, John 2 and 16, then going over to the people, this is in the NLT, going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Isn't that what you're seeing here? Hold up, let's bring this back. Is this, is this not what you're seeing? Are you not seeing a marketplace being made out of this knowledge, this truth. And you got many simple-minded Israelites that's going to line up like a welfare line to get this shit, man, because they're simple. Right now, we got apparel for the sisters, apparel for the kids, and of course... Of course, yeah, you guys are marketeers. You got apparel for the sisters. Most of them don't even don't even believe in this, this thing of ours. They don't even understand what it's all about. Then you, you even brought in the children in there. Okay. <laughs> the whole family gets outfitted while your pockets get fatter and fatter. And you talking about us being sellouts? You guys need to look in the mirror first. You want to talk about a goddamn sellout. Peril for the mighty men of Israel. We got quality material, affordable prices, y'all. Check it out. We got stuff for the Southern Kingdom. We got stuff for the Northern Kingdom. We got exclusivity. All right, y'all see. Exclusive. Look at this simple ass nigga. All right. <laughs> Exclusivity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, y'all see. But then he's the same guy. He's the same guy talking about some group being a sellout. Brew drip. Y'all see the brew sauce. All right. Deacon Sakari new clothing line. Called the whole armor dot com. All right, everybody go support the whole armor dot com, which is a quotation from scripture. Put on the whole armor. This don't look like armor to me. Support Israelite businesses. And I greatly appreciate y'all. Shalom. Peace. Cops hop out. All right, some more marketing. All music at DeaconSakari.com. So they got the clothing line down pat. They got the music division down pat. More marketing. Leviticus, I like my fish with scales on them. As Chief Ephraim, he could vouch. We be putting in the work while you... But mind you, they ask, they're, they're making the question, are we sellouts? They're getting the Velda Pastor on down. No, you're looking at the real sellouts. Sitting on the couch. Camp haters quiet as a mouse. Y'all ready? Shout out to... Let's fast forward this. Me specializing in Hebrew apologetics. Come learn how to defend the gospel. Email Sakari Seattle at gmail.com. Limited registration. Sakari. Sakari. Sakari Varsity Online. More marketing. We are the children of the one. Do you want to defend the gospel? The 
above all nations, all nations. Above all nations, all nations. We are the chosen of the one you have. We finally back on, finally yeah. back on. More marketing. Children's Bibles with black and brown images. I know a children's Bibles. A lot of y'all been waiting. You better a lot of people on back order. We still got some though. Put your order in before it's too late. All right, y'all. Go to czyn.network. Czyn.network. We done with Patreon. No more Patreon. Czyn.network. You're going to get videos too hot for YouTube or early releases. So go sign up. Promo code Deacon Sakari. More marketing. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Not only do you get Deacon Sakari's content, you get Gorilla Hebrew content, Hassad content, other camps putting their content on this platform. We need our own app. So sign up using promo code Deacon Sakari. CZ. YN dot network. It's our own code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. Promo code Deacon Sakari. CZY praises. Get your commercial played here. Contact Sakari Seattle at gmail.com. Introducing Super Thanks. YouTube has now added a feature where you can donate if you miss the live show by just clicking the heart button with the thanks on it. You know when when uh I was just thinking about the scripture. These are greedy dogs. Let me get that. Then after all of that, they want you to donate. Greedy dogs. Let's get that. Uh, Isaiah 56 and 10. Let's start there. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Yeah, these guys should be more into prophecy. You know, warning about the the microchip and you know and the the um, the coming new world order. You know, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble and all of that. And if they really believed in it and was really into it, they would see the futility of trying to uh, try to making a, a, a money. What's the, what's the phrase I'm trying to find here? Trying to make a money-making adventure using this truth. Because all hell is getting ready to break loose. They're going to do away with this money system. They're going to bring in the the uh, the chip. All right, That's going to be the new form of currency. So what they really should be doing is warning the Lord's people about that. How this society is going to collapse. Okay? That should be their main... Uh, their main um, their main lessons but as you clearly see it's about them using this knowledge this truth to become rich okay it's about marketing okay his watchmen are blind so that's an example of how they're supposed to be watchmen but they're really blind spiritually blind Bible speaks about redeeming the time for the days of evil. You, you don't, really don't see that from those guys. Okay? His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Meaning you're supposed to warn the people of what's coming. That's what a dog, if there's an enemy, the dog will bark and warn you. Look, listen, there's an enemy around. Okay? Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Right? Spiritually, they 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 uh, <laughs> they're in a, a comatose state spiritually. Now here's the point: it says, "Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough." Yeah, so have that. They have all these marketing ploys going. They still want you to donate with all these marketing ploys that they have. Okay. Like it says here, yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Yeah, their own way. Okay, they got their own thing going on. They're not following the program of Yahweh Shai. They got their own thing going on. They all look 
to their own way, everyone for his gain, personal gain. Look at that. Look at it in the NLT, uh, Isaiah 56, 11. Like greedy dogs, they are never satisfied. They are ignorant shepherds, all following their own path and intent on personal gain. Now, you, did you not see an example of that group? Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves. Yeah, we're going to have a good time with strong drink. And tomorrow shall we be tomorrow and tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. See that? That's their mentality, man. They want to have a good time. They're not preparing the Lord's people for the hell that is coming by constantly telling them of of the hell that is coming the, the, again the the uh, mandatory implantation of that chip the the military roadblocks the curfews the new world order armies how the cities are going to be cordoned off the plagues that are coming the uh, the um, um, pestilences the diseases and ultimately uh, world war three and uh, and uh, how this place is going to be totally destroyed. That's not their main message. Okay. And how could it be when, when all of, you know, judging by watching their videos is all about money. It's all about marketing. Okay. Isaiah 56 and 12. Come, they say, this is the NLT. Let's get some wine and have a party. Let's all get drunk. Then tomorrow we do it again. We'll do it again and have an even bigger party. So it's a, a big party over there, basically. It's the same thing with the IUIC. As a matter of fact, they had a, a, a video. Uh, it, it's an Israelite party. It's an Israelite party. They're, they're another group that are marketeers. Okay, you watch their videos towards the end. They're, they're, they're selling you all kind of products. Okay, marketing this knowledge is truth. Let's get back to the video. So basically that, well, it goes all the way up until almost six minutes. And that's when this guy comes on. Uh, Deacon it, it, It'll be on every video. Uh, and then the other day I was in Birmingham. Hey, I'm Grammy's History of Black Month Lecture album. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like more marketing. Have you reached your marital oh, ceiling? We Are you here we go, another commercial. Marketing. Individual and marriage counseling. From the deacon himself. He's going to be your marriage counselor. Experiencing irreconcilable differences, feeling alone with no Israelites near you, we are now offering individual and marriage counseling. We also offer family therapy. How, how, much, is, how much does that cost? More marketing. Career counseling and trauma. Tired in your nostrils. We begin to spit thought. The church don't even know the truth. They can even tell you. And this is before the lesson even begins. All this nonsense. Now you watch, in contrast, you watch our videos, right? Beginning to fell the pasta on now. We don't have all this nonsense. We just get right to it. Okay? As soon as you click on the video, get ready to learn. All right? We don't, we don't put up these long ass promos and they don't do all this nonsense. We just get right to the point. So you get you get the idea, all right? So I got some scriptures here. Let me bring out these scriptures and that'll be the video. All right, this is a list of scriptures I put together. Again, the title of the video is A Workman is Worthy, A Workman, A Workman Worthy of Their Meat. Now, this is the book of uh, Isaiah because if you're teaching the knowledge, the truth, the, the heavenly, the point is the heavenly father will put the spirit on certain individuals to take care of you. So you don't have to go about turning his, his house, turning his house into a house of merchandise. Okay. Remember this knowledge is truth doesn't belong to us. This is not our property. It's not our property to take it and turn it into a house of merchandise. It belongs to Yahweh Bashim Yahshah. So we really should treat this this knowledge as truth with respect. This is not our property. Okay? 
it's not our property to sell and, and uh, to, to make profit on it and filthy lucre and all of that. Matter of fact, let's, let's get that scripture. Filthy lucre, I keep quoting it. This is uh, 1 Peter 5 and 2. It says, Feed the flock of the Heavenly Father which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, constraint meaning a burden, not looking at it as, as being a burden, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. I wonder what that says in the... Uh, in the um, NLT. First Peter five and two in the NLT. Care for the flock that the Heavenly Father has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, right? Look at it as being a burden. Not for what you will get out of it, and that's well, that's why a lot of these guys are involved in this thing, to see what they can get out of it. Okay, to see what they can get out of it, as in filthy lucre, as in, as in, uh, uh, you know, carnal things. Okay, uh, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Absolutely, and that's that's the. Uh, when you do that, you're coming in sincerity, honesty, and truth. Filthy lucre. Uh, Titus 1.11, whose mouths must be stopped. And eventually those guys, their mouths will be stopped. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not. For filthy lucre's sake. Yeah. What they can get out of it. First Timothy, uh, Titus 1 and 7. It says, For a bishop must be blameless as the steward, as the steward of the Heavenly Father, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Filthy lucre. 1 Timothy 3 and 8, likewise must the deacons, this guy called himself deacon, a deacon, right? Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. The same thing is said here, 1 Timothy 3 and 3, not given to wine, no striker, not given up, not greedy of filthy lucre. Now, in Isaiah 56, it speaks about Greedy dogs which can never have enough. Shepherds that cannot understand. That's those dudes, man. That's why they're, they're selling everything that ain't nailed down. Got this division, that division. We're calling the truth to do that. Let's go to the next one. Well, I haven't even read Isaiah 55. Let's go back to Isaiah 55. Because Isaiah 55 makes a strong point about this knowledge that's basic basically it's free as it is written freely you have received freely give that's our attitude beginning fell apart on down we when we first came on youtube 2007 we put up the videos free now iuic when we first came on iuic was on youtube but you had to pay for the rest they give you a little bit of the video but then you'd have to pay for the rest of the video to watch the rest of it. You'd have to pay. Okay? And they had to stop that practice when we came on because we gave you the whole video for free. So that kind of messed up their money. All right? IUIC was doing that. I, Isaiah 55 and 1. The f what does it say here? The subheading. The free offer of mercy. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, 
come ye to the waters and ye and he what what is the waters it's a metaphor for this knowledge is truth how should i call it living water thirst of meaning you want you want this understanding you want this knowledge you want to know why things are the way they are you have answers or you, answers you have questions and you need answers in this society so you're thirsting so come ye to the waters and buy. The waters is this knowledge, this truth. Okay? How should I call it? Living water. And he that have no money. See that? He that have no money. Come ye by. So this is not a thing of, uh, of uh, trying to market this truth to the people. It's supposed to be free. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay? And he that have no money, come ye buy and eat, meaning learn, food for thought. Come buy wine and milk, which is a metaphor for this knowledge, without money. It mentions it again, second time. And without price. But now you go to the Sakari, they got, they got a price for everything. They're marketeers, man. They don't have the nerve to talk about a group that's sell out. <laughs> Talking about us selling out. No, you, you, you guys have sold out. Everything, everything about you is money. Money this, money that. Okay? So that was Isaiah 55 and 1. How do you get around that? Let's go from there to Malachi, the third chapter. Malachi, the third chapter. Now, the Bible does speak about, what it speaks about concerning money is tithes and offerings. And that's incumbent upon the person to uh, that is listening to uh, support. Because even if they didn't support, we'd still be out there teaching. Because we have faith. We have faith that Yahweh Hashem Yahushai will take care of us. Yahweh Shai made a, st a statement about the ravens. All right, <clears throat> actually, a statement about the birds. scripture for you. Alright. It is right here. The book of Matthew 6. Matthew 6. And uh Matthew 6, and 24, no man can serve two masters. Now that group I was just showing you, money is really their master. That's why they're doing what they're doing. They, 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 they have turned this knowledge of truth into a house of merchandise because money is their master. That's what they serve. They serve money. They're trying to get rich. And that's why they partnered up with the IUIC. They partnered up with the IUIC because there are certain members at the IUIC that this knowledge, this truth, have made them rich. Not spiritually rich, but carnally rich. That's their main uh, motivation, man, to make money. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the Most High and Mammon. Mammon as in riches. Money. Okay? The love for, as it is written, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And those dudes love money. Anytime you see these marketers turning this knowledge and this truth into a marketing ploy, that means they love money. And we saw that, we, we saw that same nonsense at the main school, 1 West 125th Street. When the money came in, that's when the niggas came out. When the money came in, that's when the niggas came out. And a lot of these guys, they fell out of the truth. They, well, they became rich. They made a lot of money. They turned the Lord's house into a house of merchandise. They became rich. They made a lot of money, and they fell right out the truth. Was, what did the Apostle Paul tell Timothy? Or told Timothy, but they that will be rich will fall into what? Temptation. 
and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. That's what the Apostle Paul told Timothy. And we saw that example firsthand at the school, 1 West 125th Street. That's what broke up the school when the money came in. Because Elder High Priest Ariel used to pray in, in Hebrew for, for, the, for the Heavenly Father to send, to send us lots of money. He would go, Rabium, Shaquarium, Rabium, Shaquarium, which is Hebrew for money, much money. And when the money came in, that's when the niggas came out. Okay? So there you go. So we're not supposed to have that kind of mentality. So we learned, we learned from the past, beginning fell apostle and down. We saw what lots of money can do to a group. Matthew 6 and 25, look at the, the subheading, the cure for anxiety. Therefore, say, um, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than, the, the, more than meat and the body than remnant? Behold, the fowls of the air, here's the point. For they sow not, yeah, they don't punch in the clock, they don't go to work. Neither do they reap, nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Now, are we supposed to work? Yeah, yeah, we're supposed to work. All right, as it is written, you, you don't work, you don't eat. But the point that Yahweh Shai is making is, you're supposed to have faith in Yahweh Shai, that, that you will get taken care of. After all, you've been called into this knowledge, this truth. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. See? Are ye not much better than they? There you go. So it comes down to faith. Especially if we're doing, if we're doing the work of Yahweh Shai, feeding, like Yahweh Shai told Peter, if you love me, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, we're feeding the flock. You think we ain't going to get taken care of, man? Them, them guys lack faith, man. They, you know, the thing is, they don't even understand what they're involved in anyway. Okay? Uh, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? See that? And why take ye thought for remnant? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Check that out. Wherefore, if the heavenly Father so clothe the grass that of the field, which which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? See. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, as in the other nations, which they don't have no faith. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of the heavenly Father and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Exactly. Seek ye first the kingdom. What's an example of that? Learning this knowledge is truth and going out and teaching it. Then everything you need, you, you may not get what you want, but you're going to get what you need. Your necessities. They'll be taken care of through the Spirit. That's the point. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the, is the evil thereof. Exactly. We're going to get our daily bread. Like Yahweh taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. We're going to get our daily bread, especially if we're doing the Lord's work. Okay, so let's get to Malachi now. Malachi 3 and 8. Malachi, let me start at uh, well, let me start at 8 first. Malachi 3 and 8 look at the subheading you have robbed the Heavenly Father. Now that's for those that listen to this knowledge is true and uh, they're not even compelled to help the ministry. In a way they have robbed the Heavenly Father. Okay, will a man rob the Heavenly Father? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So now, that is biblical. You know, your tithes and your offerings. Especially if you are receiving...
the gospel from you, you know, from your priest, from your minister, and he's teaching you the truth. Your obligation is to pay tithes and offerings. That's your obligation. But again, that's incumbent upon you. Even if you didn't give any money, we would still teach because it's incumbent upon us since we've been given this knowledge, this truth, this talent for us to teach. Okay? Everybody got their job to do. Okay? So our job is to teach you and enlighten you to this knowledge, this truth. And you that's coming in, your job is to take care of the priest. That enlighten you, that give you this knowledge, this truth. Okay? And even if you didn't, which shows your lack of faith, we would still teach, which shows our faith. Okay? We would still teach and feed the flock because we believe we're going to get, if we don't get taken care of on, in the, on this side, we're definitely going to get taken care of on the other side. We're going to get our reward. We're working for our reward. And the helps are part of the body. The Heavenly Father has set it up where there will be individuals that will that will help the ministry. They're part of the body. Let me read that to you. So we don't worry, man. We do not worry. 1 Corinthians 12 and 27. Now this is the body of believers, right? Now ye are the body of Yahweh Shai and members in particular. And Yahweh have set, have set some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps. What do you think it means helps? Those that will help with either shelter or help with money. Help with carnal things. So they're part of the body. So we don't have to worry about anything. Yahweh Shem Yahshai got everything covered, man. Helps, governments, diversities of tongues, those that can speak multiple languages. All right. Under helps, when we read that in the NLT, here are some of the parts the Heavenly Father has appointed for the church first are apostles second are prophets third are teachers then those who do miracles those who have the gifts of healing those who can help others right by shelter or money etc etc man see that So back to Malachi 3 and 8. Will the man rob the heavenly father? Yet ye have robbed me, but we but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. See? So if you're getting this great knowledge, this great truth, and you really feel that this is the knowledge, this is the truth, it's your obligation to help those that are teaching you the knowledge and the truth. And by doing that, you yourself get rewarded. As we're about to read here. You were cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Which means you 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 uh, did not take care of the Lord's priests. You know, the ones that are that are giving you this knowledge, this truth, that are breaking down the prophecies for you. By not taking care of them, you have robbed the Heavenly Father. That's what the Heavenly Father is saying. You are and that and because of that, you have received the curse. You were cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tights into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Right, the, the, the ministers get taken care of, as they should. And prove me, and this is the Heavenly Father speaking to you, those of you who feel you don't need to give. And so what, y'all teaching the truth, so what, I ain't got to give y'all my money. Well, you can have that attitude, but you, you're going to have a curse right along with it, if you have that attitude. Right? So the Lord is speaking to you. He said, look, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour, a, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. So that's the Heavenly Father. He, he, he's speaking to you. Those of you who feel you don't have to give. The Heavenly Father said, look, you go ahead and give to the, the men that I set up to teach 
and prove me if I will not bless you, if I will not give you a blessing. So that's incumbent upon you that believe to put this into action. We don't, we're not begging anybody for money, unlike these other Israelite groups. They're always begging you for money. We, we ain't begging nobody for money, man. We know we're going to get taken care of because we have faith. Okay? Let's go to Matthew 10 and 10. Matthew 10 and 10. It says this. Uh, Matthew, well, let me start at uh, Matthew 10 and 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's us. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's exactly what we do. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received. There it is. Freely you have received, freely give. So what part of that don't, don't these other groups understand? You know, being marketers, being profiteers instead of prophets. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purse. See? Nor script for your journey. Right, because we teach according to the Holy Spirit. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. That's where the title of the video comes in. In other words, if you're a workman and you and you teaching this gospel, you will get taken care of. The Holy Spirit will make sure you get taken care of. Okay. Uh, let's read that in the NLT, Matthew 10 and 10. Don't carry a traveler's bag with a change of clothes and, and sandals or even a walking stick. Don't hesitate. Here's the point. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality. And it may come in the form of shelter or money or anything. Because those who work deserve to be fed. There you go. We're going to get taken care of, man. Now, here's an example of, of a church that... Um, we're about to read an example, Romans 15 and 27, of a church that took care of those that were in need, particularly the saints that were at Jerusalem, which were poor. They were taken care of by this church because the church felt compelled to take care of them. And we're going to read it. Romans, the 15th chapter. Uh, let me see where I should start. Okay, let's start at the 24th verse, Romans 15, 24. Whensoever, this, these are the words of the Apostle Paul speaking. Whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way to the word by you. If first I be somewhat, I be somewhat, filled with your company but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints for it have pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem see so it was the church at the church of Macedonia and Achaia right that took care of the poor saints at jerusalem that's that's the contribution which which included money okay it was an offering now again remember what we read in malachi tithes and offerings so that's incumbent upon those that listen to us they pay their tithes and then they give offerings and then they get blessings we just read it in malachi the third chapter the lord even said prove him if he will not give you a blessing but it's, come, it's incumbent upon faith. It's incumbent upon faith. If you really believe you're getting the truth, you're going to support. That spirit in you is going to be like, I got to support these guys. Okay? Uh, the Apostle Paul even said, is, is it, well, I think that's the next scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians in ninth chapter. Uh, to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem, it have pleased them verily, and their debtors they are, and their debtors they are, 
For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, the Gentiles are the Israelite foreigners, spiritual things as, as in this knowledge, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. Now let's read that in the NLT, because this is powerful. Romans 15, 27. They were glad to do this. Do what? Give a contribution to the poor saints at Jerusalem, the church of Macedonia and Achaia. They were happy to do it. Why? Because they felt they received the truth. They were glad to do, the, to do this because they feel they owe a real debt to them. To who? To the poor saints at Jerusalem who was teaching them the truth. They felt there was a real debt. They say, look, we got to take care of these guys. That's the point I'm making. Since the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, received the spiritual blessings, as in this knowledge is truth, of the good news, see, from the believers in Jerusalem who were poor, they feel the least they can do in return is to help them financially. You see that? So that proves my point, man. We're going to get taken care of. Okay? We are going to get taken care of. And there's your example. Romans, the 15th chapter. The point is really in the 27th verse. And finally, 1 Corinthians, the 9th chapter. You know, I'm going to bounce around here. 1 Corinthians 9. And... Uh, 11, let's read the 11th verse. Uh, 7th verse. Who goeth a warfare, and we're involved in the warfare, right? It says, endure hardness as a good soldier, right? Who goeth a warfare anytime at his own charges? There you go. Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit there? There you go. Or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? That's us. We feed in the flock. So it's incumbent upon the flock to take care of us. But even if they don't, we're still going to do it. We're still going to feed them. Because we're going to get taken care of by the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shemiah anyway. Say I these things as a man or saith not the law also. So even the law backs that up. For it is written in the law. Of Moses, thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Exactly. Doth the Most High take care for oxen? And he was talking about people. It was a metaphor. Or say if he it altogether for our sakes. There you go. The teachers. That they get taken care of by the people. For our sakes, no doubt. This is written. That he that ploweth should plow in hope. And he that thresheth in hope should be partakers, partaker of his hope. If we have sowed unto you or sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Right. See, so if we have planted the spiritual seed in you, is it, is it a great deal if, we, if uh, you give us money, if you support us? It's not a big deal. And even if you didn't, which we're not going to beg you to, it's based upon your faith. Even if you didn't, we're still going to get taken care of. If others be partakers, partakers of this power over you, are we not rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, see? But suffered all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Yahweh Shai. Exactly. We're not going to beg you to death for your money. Okay? Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? Exactly. And they which wait at the altar, like the, te the priests, the teachers, are partakers with the altar. Even so have the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. You see that? They should benefit from it. All right. So pretty much that's it. I'm going to end it there. This has been workmen worthy of their meat. And like I said, in conclusion, if we're the true workmen of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, we're going to get our meat. We're going to get taken care of regardless okay and even now as i as i speak many of you that's probably hearing this for the first time and you have some kind of resources you'll feel compelled to help the the brotherhood you really will because that holy spirit that righteous spirit will kick up within you 
And you're going to get blessings. That's how you get blessings, man. Uh, Yahweh Shai said it. He said, give that you shall what? That you shall receive. There's another scripture where it says, the Heavenly Father love a cheerful giver. But see, the thing is, when you give, you have to know who you're giving to. It tells you that in the Apocrypha. When you give, know who, to whom you're giving to. Okay, you give to the right person, you get them blessings. All right, so hopefully you were edified, and I'll see you in the next one.